Hi students, this is Capital Budgeting Decisions for Chapter 11. In the prior chapter, we were introduced to the master budget process. We budgeted for sales, production, direct material purchases, cash, and a handful of other things. In this chapter, we will look at capital budgeting decisions. And capital budgeting decisions plan for significant investments in projects that have long-term implications, such as the purchase of new equipment, the introduction of new products, plant expansion, equipment replacement, and uh, lease and buy decisions. So those are pretty big decisions to make. We're going to take a look at a few different methods to help us make these capital budgeting decisions. Uh, the first two we will look at will be the payback method and the net present value method, um, both of which analyze the cash flows associated with capital investment projects. And I'm just going to add here, if you haven't read the chapter yet, please read the chapter. There's so much in there that I'm not going to cover. This is just touching on a few things. Um, definitely helpful, but please read the chapter. Uh, the, the other thing we're going to look at for helping us make decisions is the simple rate of return method. And this is based on analyzing incremental net operating income. So let's get some basic definitions out of the way. Cash outflows refers to money that is coming out of our pockets. And these items would be for things such as incremental operating costs, initial investments, repairs and maintenance, anything where the cash is flowing out, out of our pocket. And then typical cash inflows pertain to things that would improve our cash. And these would include things like the salvage value we receive when we're done with a piece of equipment. So think about when you take something to the salvage yard, you're done with it, but you get some money back. Um, the reduction of cost, that's actually a cash inflow to us, or incremental revenues. Those are all cash inflows. The payback method is pretty easy, I think. We're going to solve for the length of time that it takes for a project to recoup its original cost out of the cash receipts that it generates. And here we see the basic payback period formula. The investment required divided by the annual net cash inflow. Okay, so here's our formula. Now this is assuming that the net cash inflow is the same every year. Also, the time value of money is irrelevant here. Also, for our convenience, we're going to assume that our time period is expressed in years. Management at the Daily Grind want to install an espresso bar in its restaurant. It's going to cost us $140,000, and it's going to have a useful life of 10 years. It's going to generate annual net cash inflows of $35,000. So management requires us to have a payback period of five years or less on all investments. That's just the timeline they've given us. Maybe they want to change gears and do something else in five years and get out of the espresso business. Whatever the case may be, they want to be able to pay back their original investment within five years. So what is the payback period for the espresso bar? Let's use our equation again. The investment required, which was $140,000, divided by the annual net cash inflow, which is 35,000, will give us a payback of four years. So yeah, that's great. It's gonna be within that five year period. So management would want to invest in the espresso bar. When the cash inflows associated with an investment project change from year to year, the payback formula won't work, the one we just did. Instead, we're gonna to have to look at each year's cash inflows and how that impacts our original investment and then find the year in which we recoup the original cost. So we really have to go year by year and say, what cash inflows did we get? Did we pay back our original cost? What's the addition to the next year? Did we pay back our original cost? And et cetera. The net present value method compares the present value of a project's cash inflows with the present value of its cash outflows. The difference between these two streams of cash flows is called the net present value. Um, we're going to do some calculations that will require the tables in your book. So refer to page 554 and page 555 in your textbook um, as we go forward. The capital budgeting techniques that best recognize the time value of money are those that involve discounted cash flows. And this is a tricky concept to grasp, but basically discounting cash is the opposite of investing and growing your money. If you had a dollar today to invest and grow into more money in five years, then receiving that same dollar five years from now, then receiving that same dollar five years from now isn't quite as appealing because we couldn't invest it or turn it over for more money. So looking back on the money that we had, we discount it to a lesser value. So we say that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar a year from now because we can invest it and do things with it. 
Therefore, the projects that promise earlier returns are preferable to those that promise later returns. I'm going to go pretty fast through this example. It's also in your textbook, um, so if you have any questions, refer to your book. There are a lot of examples in your text, so I'm only going to touch on a few of them. And if you um, watch this video and you're still confused, please go back to your text, read through it again. I think it's, it does a wonderful job of explaining things. In this example here, we see that Lester Company has been offered a five-year contract to provide component parts for a large manufacturer. Here are some of our cash outflows. $160,000 for just buying the equipment. $100,000 that will be tied up in working capital. $30,000 cash outflow for realigning the equipment in year three. And here's the cash inflow. We're going to get a salvage value of $5,000 when we're done with the equipment. And then the last block of information here is all related to the normal operating income we'll receive with this equipment. And at the end of five years, the working capital will be released and may be used elsewhere by Lester. But Lester is going to uh, use a discount rate of 11% also. Okay, so we're going to get that working capital back when we're done. It's another thing to add to our information. So first, let's get our annual net cash inflows solved from the normal operations of the business thanks to the new equipment. We have sales revenue coming in, less the cost of the parts sold, less the salaries and shipping. Those are our plain expenses. So revenues minus our expenses equals our income, or in other words, our annual net cash inflow of $80,000 every year. Since we're buying the equipment now, and the working capital is needed now, we will use the face value of the cash outflows as is. Okay, so our factor, we're going to apply a factor of one. So to the cash outflows, we'll multiply it by one, and we'll get a present value of the exact same amount. And this is where it gets tricky. Because one dollar is worth more now than in the future, we have to discount the cash inflows and outflows to their present value. So take a look at these factors that are being used. If you look in your textbook on page 554, you are given the factor based on the year and the discount rate, which is 11%. So if you were going to look up year two, the value of $80,000 at a discount rate of 11%, you'd see a factor of 0.812. That factor is applied to the cash flow, and then we receive the present value. We just multiply it. Okay, like I said, go through your textbook if you have any problems with this. There's also some videos I put in the supplementary resources on getting that present value. The total cash flows in year one of 80000 as I said, multiplied by the factor, gives us a present value of $72,000. As another example, the total cash flows in year three, okay, so we're on year three now, um, was $50,000 because we had $30,000 to realign our equipment. So we had $80,000 coming in, less the $30,000 for realigning the equipment in that year. Using the factor rate from our table of 0.731 to derive this future cash flow's present value of $36,000. Then use sum all the present values together to get a total of a positive $76,015. Okay, so we got that amount. We're going to do it a little bit different this time. Um, we're going to use the annuity table for this situation. And annuities are fixed sums of money paid to someone each year. It's the same amount every year. We are receiving the same annual cash revenue and cost each year, each year, so we can use the annuity table on the next page from the one we just used, page 555. And I've added some videos on net present value again in supplemental resource. So if you are having difficulties, please read your text and also look at the supplemental resource tab um, on Blackboard. Okay, so same information, but here we're going to use the annuity table. Because we have the same value coming in from years one through five, $80,000, Using the annuity table, which is the same amount coming through every period, we can look up the value for a factor rate of 11% for five periods and get 3.696 to apply to our cash flows. So for all five years combined at $80,000, the present value is $295,680. Okay, so the next one, realigning of equipment in year three, that's just a one number amount. 
So we're not going to use the annuity table. We'll go back to the present value table. Look up the present value for 11% in year three. Get our factor and multiply it by the cash flow to get a present value. And the sum of all of our present values is going to be the same amount, $76,015. We're actually going to accept the contract because the project has a positive net present value. So in summary, if the net present value is positive, we're going to accept it. If it's zero, we're probably still going to accept it because it promises a return equal to the required rate of return. And if it's negative, we're not going to accept it. That's not good. That means we're still kind of in the hole for the original investment. Least cost decisions are used when revenue is act not actually involved. We're going to choose the project that has the least total cost. So here's our example. Schmidt Figure Company is trying to decide whether to overhaul an old delivery truck now or purchase a new one. And the company uses a discount rate of 10%. So either one gonna go, is not going to generate any revenue for us. The cost of the old truck, if we keep it, we're going to have to overhaul it so it's usable still. And that's going to cost us $4,500. we are going to have some operating costs annually of $10,000 just to keep it running. We'll get a salvage value in five years when we sell it. Of 250, um, or we can just scrap it now and get nine thousand dollars. That's if we scrap it now, we'll get a salvage value. Now, if we decide to do a new truck, on the other hand, we have a purchase price of twenty-one thousand. That's the outflow. We're going to have some operating costs of six thousand, and then in five years, we'll scrap that one, but we'll get more for it. We'll get three thousand dollars for it. So we apply our present value tables again to this information. So purchase price and the buy the new truck was 21000 Buy it now. It, that is the present value, so it's a factor of one. It retains its present value as, as we know it. Let's look here at, at year five when we salvage it. If we keep, uh, or I'm sorry, if we buy a new truck, $3,000 will be our salvage value. We're going to apply the factor of 0 0.621. That's from our table. You have to go to your table, look up 10% in year five to get that factor and apply it and you'll get your present value. Your sum of all your present values for the new truck is negative 32,000 which means that it is a complete cash outflow but compared to keeping the old truck when we apply the present values to its information it's actually less to buy the new truck 32,000 compared to keeping the old truck which will cost us 42000 which will be more. So we want to buy the new truck. And actually, it would cost us the least by comparably by $9,372. So buying the new truck is the best decision. It costs the least. The simple rate of return method is the last method we will explore. You can breathe a sigh of relief. No present value tables on this one. This is a simple formula to calculate the rate of return based on the annual incremental net operating income divided by the initial investment. Be aware that we need to reduce the initial investment by any salvage value that we're going to receive when we're done with it at the end of its life. So here they are in our example, the management of Daily Grind wants to install an espresso bar. It's going to cost us $140,000, has a useful life of 10 years. It's going to generate some incremental revenues of $100,000 and incremental expenses of $65,000. What's the simple rate of return on the investment project? Let's go back to our formula again. We're going to take our annual incremental net operating income, and if you remember from financial accounting, that's revenues less expenses, and we're going to divide it by the initial investment. Okay, so revenues minus expenses gave us 35000 That's our incremental net income, and we're going to divide it by the investment of 140000 and we'll get a simple rate of return of 25%. One last thing, we should always do a post-audit follow-up after the project has been completed to see whether or not expected results were actually realized.